In this day and age, we could all use a little extra cash. Well, I'm here to tell you how you can earn some cash and at the same time help keep your families and loved ones safe from criminals. Crime Stoppers offers cash rewards for the arrest and prosecution of the criminals you are about to see. How does Crime Stoppers work? First, you call the toll-free number seen here and report any information you have anonymously to the Crime Stoppers operator. You do not have to pay for the call and the best thing is this is anonymous. No one will know that you supplied the information that closed the case. Once you give Crime Stoppers the information, you'll be given a different 1-800 number to call back and check the status of the case you originally called about. You have to call the status line, which is also a free call, to find out if your information led to an arrest. If an arrest or conviction is made on someone you told Crime Stoppers about, you will receive instructions on how to collect your money. Basically, you will be given a code number. You use that number to receive your cash. With that number, your identity remains anonymous. Think about some of the things you hear and think about how you can turn that information into cash in your pocket. Thank you and thanks for those anonymous tips. The following four subjects are on Polk County's most wanted sexual predators and offenders list. On May 29, 2013, at approximately 3.15 a.m., Alva Ware, pictured here, entered the Sunoco located at 2100 Memorial Boulevard in Lakeland and approached the cashier station. The cashier was not within close proximity of the cash register, and Ware reached across the counter and removed two boxes of cigarillos. Ware left the store and then re-entered one minute later. As Ware entered through the front door and walked toward the cashier station, he pulled a black nylon stocking over his face. Ware approached the cashier and demanded money from the register. Ware grabbed the customer by the neck and pushed him away during the robbery. Ware did not display a firearm, but indicated he had one tucked behind his back and verbally threatened to kill the cashier. After removing cash from the register, Ware fled the incident location on foot. Ware's backpack and other additional items were used in the robbery, recovered in the area of Wasina Avenue in Lakeland. This is an area he is known to frequent, where he currently has an active warrant for his arrest for armed robbery. Polk County Sheriff's Office detectives are asking for the public's help in locating a suspect in an attempted murder investigation. At approximately 8.13 a.m. on Saturday, March 15, 2014, Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to Langford Street and Albritton Avenue in Fort Meade regarding a wounded victim in a car. The victim had been shot and was airlifted to an area hospital where she is recovering. Deputies learned the victim had been in Bartow with 27-year-old Jordan Matthew Pollard and another male subject when Pollard and the victim began to argue. The argument appeared to calm at one point and the trio drove to the Fort Meade area in a gold Lincoln town car. As they drove, Pollard, who was sitting in the front passenger seat, and the victim, who was in the back seat, began to argue again. Pollard brandished a handgun and threatened both the victim and the other male subject who was driving. While traveling southbound on Highway 17, just north of Fort Meade city limits, Pollard turned to the victim and shot her one time, striking her in the abdomen. The driver stopped the car. Pollard fled on foot and the driver continued to Fort Meade where he contacted emergency medical services. There is an active warrant for Pollard's arrest on the charges of attempted first degree murder, aggravated assault domestic violence, aggravated assault, and a felon in possession of a firearm. Pollard is known to visit the Bartow and Fort Meade communities as well as the Cumbie Road and Reynolds Road area of Lakeland. Polk County Sheriff's deputies are seeking the public's help in identifying four suspects responsible for a personal robbery in Winter Haven. On November 6, 2013, in the area of Crestwood Drive and Avenue J Northwest in Winter Haven, four unknown black males pushed the victim off of his bicycle and battered him with closed fists. During this time, one of the below pictured suspects snatched a 14 karat gold chain from the victim's neck, valued at approximately $1,500. On November 22nd, the victim was shopping at the Auburndale Flea Market when he crossed paths with three of the suspects involved in the robbery. They can be seen here in video surveillance. The suspect wearing the chain is known as Bookie, and the other suspect wearing the black shorts and t-shirt is known as Mike Mike. The below pictured suspects are believed to live in the Inwood area. Polk County Sheriff's Office detectives are asking for the public's help in an armed robbery investigation. 
At approximately 4.45 a.m. on December 11, 2013, two black male suspects armed with handguns entered the Denny's restaurant located at 44111 Highway 27 in Davenport and forced two employees to open the register and remove an undisclosed amount of cash. The suspects then forced both employees to the rear of the restaurant into the walk-in cooler. The suspects were both described as black males wearing all-black clothing, baseball hats with bandanas covering their faces. Both were described as being between 5'6 and 5'8 with thin builds and possibly in their 20s. Polk County Sheriff's detectives are asking for the public's help in a burglary and theft investigation. Between 10.16 p.m. on Tuesday, January 14, 2014 and 12.05 a.m. Wednesday, January 15, 2014, three unidentified subjects entered the Circle K convenience store located at Spirit Lake Road and Grady Polk Road in Winter Haven and removed merchandise without paying. One subject, described as a black female wearing pink pants, distracted the cashier while the other two subjects, either a black male or black female with a light gray sweater and a black male with a dark gray shirt, entered the cooler at the rear of the store, removed 12 packs of Corona and Heineken, and then exited the cooler. Both subjects placed the 12 packs on the floor and walked around the store until they had a window of opportunity to exit without paying for the merchandise. At the time they exited the store, the black female wearing pink pants appeared to be distracting the cashier. The subject wearing the light gray sweatshirt came back into the store and unlawfully removed an additional 12-pack of Corona. Sheriff's Office detectives are asking for the public's help in a business burglary investigation. At approximately 1.22 a.m. on Friday, March 14, 2014, at the Goodwill store located at 5411 South Florida Avenue in Lakeland, an unidentified white male subject unlawfully entered the business after hours. His image was captured on video surveillance searching through donations within the warehouse area of the business before removing a dark colored bicycle. The Polk County Sheriff's Office is seeking the public's help with an armed robbery of a pizza delivery driver. On 7.45 p.m. on February 23, 2014, the victim, a Domino's pizza delivery driver, delivered a pizza at 726 Strain Boulevard in Lakeland. When he returned to his vehicle, he was approached by an unknown black male suspect who was armed with a semi-automatic handgun. The suspect demanded the victim's money. The suspect fled the scene with an undisclosed amount of cash. The suspect is described as a black male in his early 20s, between 5'8 and 5'9, tall, clean-shaven, wearing a dark olive-colored hoodie and blue jeans. A composite sketch of the suspect can be seen here. Polk County Sheriff's Office deputies are asking for the public's help in locating and identifying the driver of a hit-and-run investigation. The nine-year-old victim suffered minor injuries. Just before 6 p.m. on Sunday, February 16, 2014, a nine-year-old Kissimmee boy was sitting on his bike along Falcon Road near Parrot Court in Poinciana when a 2004 gray Chrysler Sebring bearing Il with Illinois tag 9273024 struck the bike causing the boy to fall to the ground. The child was taken to Point Siena Medical Center where he was treated and released. Deputies investigating the incident learned the suspect initially stopped, exited the vehicle, cursed the victim and a witness, then fled the scene. The suspect is described as a heavy-set black male approximately 30 to 35 years of age. 